What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. I hope it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And in this video, I'll be talking to you guys about why I may quit my job as a doctor. Before we get started, I wanna quickly say, if you wouldn't mind taking two seconds to subscribe to my email newsletter with the link down below in the description box. My email newsletter is something I send out on a weekly basis with loads of life tips, life hacks, and just generally kind of things that I've learned throughout my entire life of being a doctor. If you want to hear more from me and get more value in your life, then I highly recommend you check out the email newsletter, which you can subscribe to below with the link down below in the description. Now, before I actually start this video, I have to say before I get canceled on YouTube that I love being a doctor. I have so much love for the profession and the last five weeks of working as a doctor has been absolutely amazing. But if I had to choose any reason, if someone literally came up to me on the streets and held a gun to my head and said, Kenji, you have to list down 10 reasons right now as to why you may ever consider quit being a doctor, then this this is the video that I'll actually make for that person. Right now, I have no intention of quitting being a doctor. I love the job. I think it's a great job. And I think you should definitely apply to medical school if you are looking at applying. But I also think it's really important for you guys to be aware of some of the downsides of being a doctor. Over the last five years on this YouTube channel, I've talked so much about why I love medicine and shown you guys about my life in medical school and now being a doctor. But let's actually sit down and talk about the downsides that I've noted whilst working as a doctor for the last five weeks. Now, the first thing, that I don't like about being a doctor is that we can't work from home and we have absolutely no flexibility when it comes to our time and where we want to be. Now, of course, all the things I want to mention is something that you sign up for. I'm not complaining at all. But when I go to work in the morning and my girlfriend you know, gets out of bed, 8.30 a.m. to start work at 9 a.m. in her house on her couch, I am so, so, so jealous. I cannot honestly describe to you. The reason being is that if I'm starting work at 9 a.m., I actually have to leave my house at 8 a.m., which means that I have to wake up at 7 a.m. So the first two hours of my entire day are completely devoted to getting up out of bed, into cooking breakfast, changing all of my clothes, and walking to my car and driving to work, which takes me 35, 40 minutes. All of these things takes a huge amount of my time. And also not to forget like driving back from work, getting stuck in traffic, having to deal with a broken down car or you know your tires being punctured every now and again. All of those things really make the actual job quite inefficient or at least make my life quite inefficient. And don't get me wrong, I love going to the hospital. I love, you know, seeing people physically. I love working as part of a team. But if I'm honest, I would probably like going to the hospital or going to the office maybe two days or three days a week and have two days a week at home by myself in my apartment. Um, that would honestly be such a good balance between working from home and actually working at the office. Because of course, I understand that if you're working from home five days a week, that also can have some downsides. But it would really be nice to have some sort of flexibility in my working hours, in my location. If you wake up in the morning, you think, actually, I feel a bit under the weather. I want to stay home and work from my laptop. That would be such an amazing thing. And obviously I'm speaking purely hypothetical because you can't run a hospital from home. I do get that. But that is one thing that I wish I had as a doctor. Now, the second thing that I have noted, which is not the greatest thing about being a doctor is working unsearchable hours. Now I've been really lucky because I actually chose pediatrics as my first specialty. I actually don't work any unsearchable hours. I work 9 a.m. and I finish at 5 p.m. But of course, course, that's not the case. I rarely ever finish on time as a doctor, which does mean that I do work some unsociable hours, even though I'm not actually contracted to work these unsociable hours. So I've been really lucky during this specialty, but I do know that in my next specialty in geriatrics and also in psychiatry medicine and the rest of my specialties as a junior doctor, I will have to work unsociable hours, meaning that's going to include night shifts. It's going to include late shifts that finish at 9 p.m. or 11 p.m. It's going to include coming into the hospital and starting work at 7 a.m. That is actually quite difficult and it does take a toll not only on your body and also on your kind of circadian rhythm, but just generally in life, working these unsearchable hours can actually be quite difficult. It is obviously something that we sign up for. To give you guys an example, if you're working a night shift and you're working a day shift the last week before, your actual circadian rhythm is stuck to a morning or a day shift. And now having to change your uh, circadian rhythm almost immediately to a night shift pattern is so, so hard. And and if you actually work a night shift, you'll actually have to come home and to recover from that. So working night shifts is actually a bit more difficult because your body will have to recover working during those kind of unnatural hours of the night. So it will take some getting used to it. And if you actually work a night shift and the next day you're meant to work a day shift or two days later, you're meant to work a day shift, it will again take a toll on your body and on your mind as well to have to readapt again to working a different set of hours in your mind and in your body as well. So that's the second thing. Now the third thing and what is super
super, super important for you guys to know. And one thing that it has definitely bothered me about being um, a, a newly qualified doctor is the low pay. Now, in my last video, I showed you guys exactly how much I earned in my first month of working as a doctor. And you probably saw that my hourly rate was 14 pound per hour, which is quite ridiculous. You guys might actually know if you watch the news that we've actually been campaigning to have more pay or at least to have full pay restoration because our actual pay as doctors hasn't changed for a significant amount of time. And with inflation going through the roof, it's actually becoming really difficult to live as a first year doctor on 14 pound per hour. What's really funny is that when I was working, oh, actually not funny, but when I was working as a bartender when I was 18 years old, I was probably earning 11 pound per hour. I had no qualifications other than my high school grades. And I was literally earning 11 pound per hour and earning 11 pound per hour when I had no qualifications and I was literally 18 years old to now earning 14 pound per hour, which is only three pounds more per hour in a difference of eight years is absolutely crazy. It really makes no sense to be earning an extra three pounds per hour when I'm eight years older now than I was when I was 18. I have two degrees. I spent eight years in university and I have over 100,000 pounds of debt. To be earning 14 pounds per hour, in my honest opinion, is actually quite ridiculous. And that's definitely something that is a downside of working as a doctor. And of course, I know that as I get more senior, as I get more experience, obviously my pay will go up. And I know that doctors in the UK are actually in the kind of higher end of earnings in the actual country. I do understand that. But purely speaking, in terms of how long it's taken us to earn this degree, not just in terms of our time, but also in terms of our money and in terms of our student loans, £14 per hour is a bit uh, of a madness in my opinion. So the next thing about being a doctor that I really don't like is the amount of admin you actually have to do. When I started medical school, I thought that I will be working as a doctor, like saving lives. I'll be on the chest every day doing CPR. I would be, you know, doing all these crazy things that you actually imagine when you watch things like Scrubs or Grey's Anatomy. And that's really not the actual picture that I have now working as a doctor. To be completely honest with you guys, I probably spend around 10% or maybe even less than 10% of my time actually seeing patients. 90% of my time is honestly spent in the doctor's office on a computer doing a bunch of admin. And that's actually really, really surprising. Definitely has surprised me in this first five weeks of working as a doctor. Of course, during the morning, you do go on the ward round and you see patients with the consultant and the rest of the team. But once the ward round is done in about two hours time, you go straight back to the office and you do a bunch of jobs. So when I say jobs, what I mean by that is chasing up referrals, making referrals to different teams, ordering investigations like chest x-rays and uh, bloods, and doing all of these kind of admin tasks that requires little to no medical skill, right? When I thought I'd be starting work as a doctor, I thought I'd be doing loads of practical skills like taking blood all the time and cannulating and putting in catheters and all of these cool things. But a lot of the time, you're actually just doing a lot of admin work. And of course, to do this admin work, to, you know, to write a discharge letter, you do have to have some medical knowledge. Of course, that's, you know, absolutely necessary. And to prescribe medication, of course, that requires your skill as a doctor. But I thought that I'd be spending a lot of my time, you know, as a doctor actually seeing patients when in reality, that's probably the least of what I do on a daily basis. Not a downside, in my opinion. I actually don't mind doing admin. And I do understand that when you're a junior doctor, of course, there is a bunch of admin that you have to do. You know, who else is going to do it? The consultant obviously has more important tasks to be doing uh, in terms of looking after all the patients. But admin work, someone has to do it. And, you know, obviously it's going to fall down to the most junior person there, which is me. The next thing I don't really like about being a doctor is there is no perks at all. And what I mean by perks is things like like bonuses for inviting you know colleagues to join the NHS. You don't get any bonuses for working harder. During the COVID pandemic, when the doctors were risking their lives to actually treat patients, they got no special treatment other than you know a clap at 8 p.m. every night. And obviously, you know, NHS discounts and stuff like that. When this is compared to my friends who work in other areas like in finance, they get a bunch of bonuses. One of my friends who works in finance, who's the same age as me, who spent three years in university, one of my friends actually got a couple of thousand pounds as a bonus. Just just simply by um, you know recommending one of his friends to join the company. A lot of the time as well, when they work in um, other companies, during Christmas time, or if they actually work really hard or do really well in their job, they often get bonuses for all of these things. And that's like bonus pay. Even if I was given 100 pounds by the NHS for working super hard during the COVID pandemic, 100 pounds at the end of the month, or even 50 pounds at the end of the month, would be lovely to treat myself to a new coffee machine or to go out for dinner or to take my girlfriend out for dinner. It would be so nice to have a bonus Bonus, just to recognize the hard work that we sometimes put in or that we always put in as medical staff for the National Health Service. And of course, I know there are difficulties with that. I know that, you know, if you gave 50 pounds to everyone, to the you know millions of people that work in the NHS, that would be a huge 
huge cut to our budget to obviously help patients in other ways. I do understand that. I'm just saying in a hypothetical world, it'd be really nice to get an extra perk here and there for working you know, hard during the hard times that we have in um, the NHS and in the current world. Now, the next uh, thing that I dislike about being a doctor is that it's not just a nine to five job. You have to do so much outside of your hours that are contracted in the actual hospital that come as part of your job that you're not paid for. As I mentioned to you guys, I rarely ever finish at 5 p.m. on the dot. I almost always finish at 5.25 p.m., 5.30 p.m., 6 p.m., 6.30 p.m. If I finish half an hour late, five days a week, that's an extra two and a half hours that I've spent at the hospital that I could have spent going to the gym or seeing my friends and stuff like that. And across the entire month, that definitely adds up. I rarely ever finish at 5 p.m. on time. And this tends to be the case across all different departments that I'm hearing from my friends. A lot of my friends actually finish at 7.30, 8 p.m. on a regular basis, which is a couple of hours after when they're actually supposed to finish. Not just that, but when you're a doctor, you have this thing called a portfolio. So if you're a medical school, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Working on your portfolio takes a significant amount of time and you're obviously not paid for that. Another example of, um, you know, of this is actually your CV. So when you're a doctor, even me now as a first year doctor, I will be applying for specialty training in the next year, two or three years, right? If I wanna do specialty training and specialize in dermatology or whatever, I will have to put in extra hours to make sure that my CV is competitive. So I will have to attend conferences. I will have to take time outside of my work to engage in research. I will have to do quality improvement projects. And these are all things that are part of being a doctor and are actually compulsory in a lot of you know cases that you're not paid to do, right? When you're on the wards from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you're seeing patients, you're dealing with all the workload that comes from patients and all the extra things, all of the life admin, all of the emails, all of this portfolio stuff you have to do in your evenings. So a lot of times I come home, I'm home at 6 or 7 p.m. I sit down on my couch and I spend an extra one to two hours doing all of these admin things that I have to do as a doctor that I'm not paid for. And that's definitely something to bear in mind. The second last thing that I have to tell you guys, I really hope this is not like a rambly video. I promise you I'm not whining. I do love that my job as a doctor, but it's important for you guys to know these things. The second last thing is that you have never ending exams for pretty much for the rest of your life or at least until you become a consultant. I obviously just finished five years of medical school. I've had exams pretty much every two months of my, you know, of the last five years. And this doesn't stop. I actually get my first year of being a doctor completely off. I get to spend this time just working, but starting from next year, I will have to start preparing for my specialty entrance exams. And to go into dermatology, you have to pass the membership of the Royal College of Physicians, I believe, MRCP. You have to pass the MRC part one, and eventually you also will have to pass the MRC part two. Now, these are really difficult postgraduate exams that you have to study for, and you have to study for these outside of your hours or in addition to your hours of being a doctor, you do get some time off to actually take study leave to prepare for these exams, but you still will have to prepare for these exams outside of your hours working as a doctor. And to be a grown person, to not be a student anymore, and to still have to constantly sit written exams and practical exams is definitely something to take into consideration. Of course, it comes with a job. Of course, that is one of the reasons that why I also like medicine, because it's constantly a journey of learning and you're constantly learning new things and you are constantly challenging yourself. That is a positive side of the job, but obviously a negative side of the job is that you will also have to continue spending a bunch of time on the books in the library studying for more exams. The last thing that I wanna mention here that is super, super important is your life as a doctor is completely and utterly structured around your job. And what I mean by that is you often have to move to where the jobs are, especially if you go into a very competitive specialty like neurosurgery or urology or whatever, your job firstly is not guaranteed because you have to compete for that job but secondly the actual location where you want to work is also not guaranteed uh, so for example i was very very lucky enough to get my first choice job in my first choice hospital so i actually didn't have to move at all when i started my job as a doctor i just moved down the road but a lot of my friends had to completely move to the entire opposite end of the country because they didn't manage to actually get their job in the location and the hospital and the specialty that they wanted to get into this also gets a lot more more complicated when you're applying for a specialty. So as I mentioned, if I apply for dermatology uh, training, which is what I'm looking at, then I may have to move to Liverpool because dermatology is super competitive and they may only be a job in Liverpool that I'm successful at getting. If I want to actually get into London, London is super competitive. And again, getting a specialty job or a specialty you know, training position will be really, really difficult. And I may have to move to another part of the country to start my dermatology training. In addition to that, if you're a single man like me who's not married, who has no kids and has no reason as to why they necessarily
necessarily need to be in a given location, then I will not have priority. If you're married and you have kids and you, your kids go to school in a particular area, then you will be given priority. But for someone like me, I may not necessarily be given priority unless I have kids at the time that I'm actually making my application to dermatology. So those are the 10 things that I don't necessarily like about my job as a doctor. Don't get me wrong, I do love the job as a whole, but if you're applying to medical school or you wanna become a doctor, it's super important that you guys are aware of all these bureaucracy and politics that come with the job of being a doctor. Before you guys go, here are a bunch of videos on my channel that you might also like about being a doctor. And also please take two seconds out of your day to drop a like down below, make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. It really helps the channel grow and reach more people. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.